And then we've got Jim Hansen, a strong special forces background, background in counterinsurgency and counterterrorism, executive vice president for the Center for Security Policy. And I think one of the biggest problems that we face is a failure to define the enemy. And it's difficult, all right? If you say anything about Islam, you're immediately tagged as a hater or an Islamophobe. And the first thing I want to make clear is the problem is not all Muslims. All right, there are plenty of good Muslims around the world. The problem is Muslims who believe that Sharia, the Islamic totalitarian ideology, which is more than a religion, is their calling and they must spread it around the world, as the congressman said. They're doing so quite successfully overseas. I mean, I, I'm sure you guys are all aware, ISIS is now an intercontinental caliphate. I mean, that's, that's a disgraceful situation, yet we have tolerated it. So I think there, there's a, the first thing you have to do is figure out who we're fighting. It is Sharia adherent Islam. Those are the bad guys. And it's a larger percentage of Muslims than most people want to admit. So if you figure out that's who it is, they have a calling. And it's very simple. They define it as jihad. All right, jihad is a holy war. All right, it's also two kinds of holy war. The violent kind of jihad we all understand it's easy. It's a bunch of crazies wearing black clothes and flying a black flag. They're lopping off heads. They're burning people alive in cages. They're selling young girls into sex slavery. Those guys we've got. The problem is our current president is not particularly invested in defeating them. But if we unleash the full power of the military and our allies, we could squash them like bugs. Now, there's another part, though. An even more insidious threat is their friends who wear suits. All right, this is the Muslim Brotherhood. This is the front groups, like the Council on American Islamic Relations, CARE, uh, plenty of Muslim student associations. These guys have a plan. And in their own words, they call it civilization jihad. And that's much tougher to see, because they use our own freedoms and liberties against us to try and destroy our culture from within. That's where you see things like be Muslim for a day at school, where they have school kids reciting a Muslim prayer that's used for conversion to Islam. They slip that one past the school board. Those are the people who are actually sharing the same goals as ISIS, as Al Qaeda, as Boko Haram, the Muslim Brotherhood is the animating ideology or the animating group that runs all of the operations worldwide. And guess what? They're here. You see them every time one of these jihadis slaughters someone in our country. The next thing you see is that family standing next to a care representative saying, oh, but it had nothing to do with Islam. Uh, well, guess what? One of the most fundamentally ignorant things I've heard a president say was when Barack Obama stood in the White House and said, ISIS is not Islamic. Hmm. You know, not only is he wrong, but he is arguing with the foremost authority on Islam. Al-Azhar University in Egypt is the go-to source for all things Islam. They said ISIS is Islamic. You know, no offense, Mr. President, but I think they would know. And that's the problem. You cannot possibly defeat an enemy you will not name. The enemy is radical Islam, Sharia adherent Islam. Thanks, Jim. The congressman brings up a great point. We actually, later today, 4 o'clock, Chesapeake F, the Center for Security Policy is hosting a panel. We'll have a UK politician named Paul Weston speaking. He was arrested in England for quoting Winston Churchill. Okay, now that's, that's how far gone they are. That'd be like being arrested for quoting Reagan here. That man is a perfect example of what the other team wants to do to us. He was reading about the threat from Islam from a Winston Churchill book. That's their biggest tool, is they will suppress speech critical of Islam, because if you can't talk about what they're doing, they can get away with it. So the thing to do, talk about yes. it. Please talk about it. And uh, please, we've got a new website, counterjihad.com. There's information about it. We want you to join the counter jihad. Be empowered with facts and information. And don't be scared what the other folks call you. You're not a hater. You're not an Islamophobe. You're a freedom-loving American. Here, here. 
you know, another point, the problem is not just the technology, it's the will. Yeah. President Obama does not want to fight radical Islam. He has decided that he is going to partner with our enemies in order to not offend Islam, in order to stay on the right side of PC. His program for domestic counterterrorism is called Countering Violent Extremism. Does anybody notice something <laughs> missing from that? Yeah, and you know who he's aiming at? He's aiming at the right wing. He's aiming at conservative groups. If you look at the FBI's website for the Countering Violent Extremism program, there is not one Islamist group on there. That's a disgrace. And he's doing it, right now his outreach is to CARE, it's to the Islamic Society of North America, it's to all of the groups that have our worst interests at heart. Consequently, we can't do things like investigate people. The, uh, talking about that, the DHS has a whistleblower, a gentleman named Philip Haney, who came out and said he was investigating the very groups that Saeed Farouk and Tashfeen Malik were members of before they came to the country. Obama's state, or Hillary Clinton's State Department and Obama's uh, DHS shut down his investigation and forced him to scrub all references from our terrorist database. He potentially, and the folks working with him, could have stopped San Bernardino, but we're not even willing to investigate people we know are trying to kill us. What is going on? Why do we have a commander in chief today who won't even say the phrase radical Islam? Two reasons. Number one, he doesn't want to offend anyone. It's a PC issue. Number two, he's not a Muslim, I don't believe, but he aligns with that worldview far too much. He aligns with that globalist worldview, that idea that we're not allowed to state that our culture is better. And consequently, he refuses to point at the, the blisteringly obvious fact that there is an entire global jihad aimed at destroying free Western culture, and he might as well be enabling it. Look at the people who are advising the president on radical Islam. There are various branches of the Muslim Brotherhood. Yep. They have an agenda to bring down our house, the United States of America, with our own miserable hands. And she just quoted a Muslim Brotherhood document called the Explanatory Memorandum. Go and Google wrote. it. Yeah, go and Google it. That is the quote. That's what they've said. These are the people who are advising our government. Don't be afraid to state that American culture and free Western society is the greatest thing that has ever happened in the history of this planet. It's here, here. better than Sharia law and Islam. And there's nothing wrong with saying that. You know, ISIS has told us that they're going to use this, use this whole refugee situation to bring radical Islam to America. What's the latest that you're hearing? What can we do that we're not doing? And is Sharia law now in some places of America? The FBI director stated in public that we cannot vet refugees coming from Syria and most other places where the jihad is in full effect. Why then are we bringing them in by the plane loads in the middle of the night? It's insanity. So that's just straight up, that's crazy. And you also need to take a look at the larger issue of if there are other countries, you know, and, and I won't go as far as Donald Trump and say we should stop all Muslims coming in, we have Muslim friends. But there are countries we cannot tell who the good guys are from the bad guys. Why in the world can't we take a pause until our security agencies can get a handle on that? That just seems like pure common sense. ISIS versus ISIL. And why does the president always say ISIL? What's going on here? <laughs> I'll, I'll grab it. It's easy. ISIL is the Levant. The Levant includes Israel. And people who say that are ceding the fact to the Islamic State that they claim they've already conquered that. So by not saying ISIL, or by saying ISIL, he's, he's giving the enemy a, a march they haven't won yet, and it's a disgrace. They're ISIS or Daesh or something worse. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Yeah.